uh, Eastern Time. So, time to prep for Dungeons & Dragons. We are prepping for this month's Hero Quest game. So every month, we run one of the original Hero Quest board game adventures. There were 14 in the original box. Uh, today we are running Quest 10, The Castle of Mystery. So let's just jump right into that. Um, Quest 10, The Castle of Mystery. Long ago, a wizard named Olar discovered the entrance to a gold mine. Using his great powers, he built a magic castle above the mine to protect it. The lower chamber of the castle has many magic doors and is guarded by a host of monsters who are trapped in time. Can you find the entrance to the gold mine? Others have tried, but the castle thwarted them every time. Alright. To my recollection, this was a very fun adventure. Uh, because there were random teleporters, and they teleported you all over the place. So, anytime you move through any door, you must stop immediately, roll two red dice. You will then be teleported to the square with the same number as the dice rolled. If that square is already occupied, you will land on the hero or monster in the square, and the landed on hero or monster will lose one body point. That's significant. And if still alive, must roll two red dice to see where he uh, is teleported. If the same number is rolled, roll again. The first teleported hero remains on the square. Heroes may only pass through one door per turn. So activating a door, we could say, uh, is like using a magical item, maybe? Um, we'll say that it's uh, activation. Um, so, what are they suggesting in this? Essentially, this was a fun house. A fun house dungeon by Hero Quest standards. Um, but it wasn't really that fun, because you just went to different rooms and there were monsters. And that was it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there was only so much in the box, I guess. And then you had like half a sheet of paper to write the adventure on. Um, if both of these Chaos Warriors are defeated, the first hero to search the room will find one of the Chaos Warriors was wearing the magical artifact Ring of Return. Its use is explained in the matching artifact card. Uh, and then finally, the square is the entrance to the mine. Anyone who enters this room can take 5,000 gold coins. However, as long as he's carrying the gold, he may not attack or defend himself. If the hero puts the gold down, it will disappear back into the mine. Um, when the game is over, tell the players that they all wasted their fucking time. Uh, and it's all fool's gold and it's all worthless. LOL. Good times. Um, the wandering monster for this quest is Olar's ghost. He appears, chuckles madly, and uh, disappears. So, as Zargon, this was an extremely hilarious thing to do to your friends. Keep in mind that, you know, children in the 80s and 90s were all sociopaths. So, uh, being able to pull a fast one on your friends like this was the height of comedy, let me tell you. Um, so couple things. <laughs> One, ain't nobody want to go get some fake gold. Um, and two, we have an opportunity here to have a really fun time, design-wise. Uh, and we're gonna take it. God damn it. Um, so, I kind of went a little bit ahead, and I already got the map in here. Uh, this map is ba barely disguised by our friends at Heroic Maps. I think it's straight up called Olar's Mysterious Castle. So they, they did not try in any way to disguise what they were doing. They're like, hey, we've already released nine, nine or ten maps at this point, so let's just go for broke. And, you know, nobody's, nobody's sued us yet. So, uh, let me grab my design document for Hero Quest, and I will see uh, what notes my past self wrote about this. And then maybe that'll give us a better idea of what to do. I have some ideas already in mind, but this is really where we're just gonna pull out all the stops and just put the craziest, dumbest shit. Because that's what Funhouse Dungeon is all about. So, yeah. Alright, documents booting up now. Alright, for this adventure, it is worth noting, they are now level 7. So they're very strong now. Um, let's see. Quest uh, 10. 
Here we go. Castle of Mystery, left with no answers and ever more questions. But hope is not lost. There exists a location of a great and wild magic. Legends say it exists outside of time itself. The magic of chronomancy is dangerous, and fortunately can leave no permanent changes on events that have already transpired. But perhaps it could be used to gain information on what has come before and what is yet to come. Journey to this castle, master its secrets, and perhaps we stand a chance of preventing the oncoming destruction. Be warned, heroes. Magical spells react dangerously in such a place. Okay, that is super vague, even for me. Um, I feel like there's absolutely no goal except journey to the castle and master its secrets. So, we, we got our work cut out for us, because I'm, I'm a lazy bum. All right. Um, so we've got this map. Uh, we're going to dynamically light this map. Uh, but we'll go ahead and take a quick tour of the map because we, one, need to throw down some labels. And we, two, let's say number underscore. There we go. All right. It's kind of weird. Okay. No, it's, uh, it's got a... It's got an S. There we go. Alright, so we know the entrance is going to be location 1. So let's go ahead and go to the GM's lair, and we'll poop down location 1. No problem. Alright, so that's the entrance. You come in, there's doors. As soon as you go to interact with the door, you realize, hey, what's up, man? You realize you've got to roll, uh, it's going to be an action to activate the door. Alright, and I don't think anything else should be happening in the, in the door. Maybe these gargoyles could pull some nonsense. So we've already got two gargoyles that we could pull some nonsense with. Uh, one of those, like, only one tells the truth, only one tells lies kind of nonsense. I don't know. Uh, then you start teleporting around. Alright, location two. Uh, we're looking at a, a bedroom. Uh, hold on a second. I have a tiny pug that has been locked in here with me, and she's making horrible sounds. Every night they insist that they could uh, they could hang out while I do this uh, do the stream, and then they always end up crying. All right, uh, so we've got a bedroom uh, that could be weird. So we got to figure out what kind of weird funhouse mechanic for the bedroom. Uh, we have a history of mimics in this campaign, so it is tempting to just make the bedroom all mimics. I'm not sure. Uh, we got this weird kind of Tetris-shaped room. I kind of have a plan for this one already. We'll see. There are a lot of statues, or uh, suits of armor here, and just a mysterious couch. Uh, there are paintings here as well. Uh, I thought maybe we could, like, have them go into the paintings. I'm not 100% sure. Alright, then we got this room full of barrels. Now, first instinct is to go with, like, some kind of wine-based craziness. But I kind of think that maybe just having Donkey Kong in there would be kind of cool. Like, the actual Donkey Kong? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Then we got room number... We'll typewriter back to the beginning. Then we've got a pantry. So, Rick and Morty Adventure actually has is a funhouse dungeon. And that's got a pretty good encounter for a pantry. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Then we got a dining room. Uh, let's see. There we go. And keep in mind, the party is going to be split up. So this is going to be a real pain in the ass to run. For sure. Alright. And then, let's see. Here's the entrance to the mine that was mentioned in the actual original adventure. Okay. Uh, let's see. Then we've got, I want to say, library. Which, they're probably sick of library after last adventure. Let's see. That would be room 8. There we 
go. And then we've got uh, the kitchen. So that'll be nine. There we go. And then we've got, uh, it looks like a summoning chamber slash alchemy lab. And that will be a 10. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So we only have 10 rooms. Only have 10 rooms. Um, but I want to come up with some really weird stuff. I want this to be a weird, a weird adventure. All right, so I'm going to go to dynamic lighting. And we're going to go ahead and put a bounding box around this real quick. Oh, boop. All right. And I guess this is a uh, very thick walls. So this is going to be kind of a pain because I'm going to have to dynamically light it twice, which is obnoxious. All right, here we go. And it is a heroic map, so of course it is all sorts of funky shapes. Because they don't make square stuff in heroic maps land. Alright. Dynamic lighting the outside of this is particularly frustrating because I seriously doubt that they're going to walk the perimeter of this castle. But anytime that you don't prep something, that is what they end up doing. It is the historically accurate uh, truth. So I guess I'll just, uh, you know, shut up and do it. There we go. Now it is important that they remember, and that I remember, we only have four meta hours for this. I am tired of these one-shots going longer than they're supposed to. I'm working much harder to try to get these one-shots to come in uh, at the actual time. Which means, whatever they're searching for will, of course, be found uh, right around the time that they run out of time. So the only real penalty for taking a long time is that you don't get to see all of the cool stuff uh, that we had planned for them to see. Now, the balancing factor here is if we don't get to use all this content, there are other Funhouse dungeons in the multiverse that need content. So we can always take our cool ideas with us to those other dungeons. And I do have, or I did, um, have a list of random stuff that could happen in a Funhouse dungeon. So could always like hit that list up and try to find some cool. Um, normally Hero Quest is supposed to go four hours. Um, I think four hours is the perfect amount of time for a one shot. Uh, but I don't want to say lately, but frequently, um, Hero Quest especially will run past the time. Uh, one, we're all having a good time, and two, it's mostly just we're all having a good time um, and joking around and everything else. That's the main reason it runs late. But having a good time is no excuse. It's no excuse. Still need to run like uh, German trains. So. There we go. I'm going to reduce the size of the brush. Oops, there we go. For this interior stuff. Here we go. And it's important to show that there's random swirling chaos here. I think my original plan for this was that all magic cast here was going to trigger wild magic surges. So that's going to be a thing. So I'll need to have the 10,000 result magic uh, wild surge table ready to go. I used to have one that I could roll in roll 20, but the API for it breaks all the time, and I get tired of spending time fixing it, since I very frequently, or infrequently use it. It seems like a lot of work for something that I don't use very often. Alright, there we go. Now, there is another map on here that I already have added. Because I felt like the map was super small. Like, even by Hero Quest standards, it's super small. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a 10 room dungeon, which is, you know, a lot of rooms. But I thought when I saw the entrance to the mine, I thought it'd be kind of cool 
if they had like a minecart chase scene because somebody posted on reddit uh basically uh, a donkey kong slash indiana jones temple of doom style um minecart maze that they had made and i was like that looks really fun so i thought it'd be kind of cool to have it lead to that so i don't know maybe that maybe that was a mistake i was just gonna make it like a 4e skill challenge and be done with it Could have Santa Claus come down the chimney in one of these rooms? I, I don't know. Again, with the Funhouse Dungeon, you're basically supposed to drop hell amounts of LSD and then design a dungeon. If you are looking for an official Funhouse Dungeon, um, gosh, anything by a Sarak, so Tomb of Horrors, Tomb of Annihilation, uh, those are both Funhouse Dungeons, deadly Funhouse Dungeons. And then, um, White Plume Mountain is another funhouse dungeon. There are dungeons that nothing really makes any sense, and there's a whole lot of meta crap in it. Alright. Hey, look at that. We did it. Alright. Now we'll switch to green, and we'll add... There we go. It should be a bad sign that the doors are open when they show up. Alright. And normally I do like a box for doors. I don't know why I'm doing a stick this time. I think I think it's because um, doors make a mess when you take them over to Foundry if they're made with a box. And I've got to start thinking about migration. So. But I'm also considering not 100% leaving D&D Beyond. Or not D&D Beyond. Oof, I'm tired. Um, roll 20. Hey, look at that. I forgot the door. God damn it. Let's try this one again. So this room has a summoning circle, and they're only level 7. I thought it'd be kind of cool to have the summoning circle just summon an impossibly strong demon or devil. Like a pit fiend or something. Um, I don't think it would, like, kill them, right? Like, right away at least. But it would definitely mess with them. It would be one of those, like, encounters that you can't actually win. Sort of thing. I don't know. A keg golem? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I had thought about that. Uh, I thought about wine weirds, keg golems. Um, there's a there's an ale elemental. There's like a lot of weird stuff I could have in there. But the, like, I kind of like the idea of like a giant ape just picking up and throwing barrels at them. Might be kind of cool. Um, I also like the idea that what's his name's ghost uh, is um, just a real asshole. Like, um, like a Rumpelstiltskin kind of deal, or Mixel, Spixel, or whatever the hell the guy's name is from Justice League and Superman. Like, he's like a chaos mage that died and never stopped being, uh, obnoxious. And so maybe, like, each room, he has, like, a bullshit riddle for you, and that gives you, I don't know, like, a key or a token or something. And then, um, you have to, like... Uh, maybe there's like a gumball machine like back at the beginning and you have to put the tokens in the gumball machine and then that's how you get the secret of his dungeon is you get it out of the gumball machine I, I don't know it seems kind of weird all right um, while I'm here I'm gonna dynamically light this crazy cool looking minecart maze in case I decide to use it so let's do that real quick. We'll do bounding box and I guess we'll do some dividing walls here. Nothing crazy. Just enough so that, you know, it feels like you're in different parts of this. There we go. Cool. Uh, same thing right here. Go. 
go. Big random rocks. There we go. Actually, I wanted to like point this out. Doesn't this look like a face? Like the eyes closed, there's a nose, the mouth is open, and this other face over here, there's like a nose and the eye and the mouth, and they're both like screaming at this waterfall. I, I don't know. Like I saw it and I couldn't unsee it. Uh, let's see. And then we're gonna... There we go. Put these down here. And I think with this map, we can actually go ahead and use dynamic lighting this time. Um, I've noticed some better performance from Roll20, so instead of just using global illumination, I might actually once again try to use dynamic lighting. We'll see how it goes. You can always turn it off if it's being a butt. In the library, I didn't even bother because I just pretended the library was so well lit that it would not be necessary. Going around here. There we go. And same deal right here. Yeah, this does look really fun. I believe this was made with either Dungeon Draft or uh, with the assets from Two Minute Tabletops. But it's really cool. Like, I saw it and I was like, that looks really fun. Alright. And yeah, there's lots of weird stuff that's going to happen to them if they get stuck on this minecart ride. Like, they got to go into the waterfall, and then there's, like, flamethrowers, and then I guess this thing's going to drop hot oil on them, and uh, going to add some minecarts in here that have, like, um, bad guys, like, just chaos orcs that are like, how the hell did we get here? And then they're going to be mixed up in the nonsense. Should be pretty fun. All right, uh, let's see. Quest 10, turn off global illumination. There we go, make sure restrict movement's actually on. We'll go over here and we'll throw down some torches or fires. There we go. Sweet. I'll just put them wherever they're already on the map. It seems like the easiest way to do it. There we go. It's looking pretty cool. Obviously, there's going to be some light coming out of them uh, flamethrowers. There we go. Alright. That looks really cool. Okay, and then up here, I guess each room has some torches, so we'll go ahead and add those in real quick. So I did have this idea that it'd be kind of cool if there was a, a room where ba bombs kept appearing. Like, I guess I'm on a Nintendo kick. Uh, but it'd be kind of cool, hear me out, if there was uh, a ba bomb factory, like a machine that just kept making ba bombs. And uh, you, every time they blew up, like however many blew up in that explosion, the number would appear on the screen. And the I, not the screen, but in the air, right? And the idea would be to blow up enough in one turn to meet like a number. So you would have to get it to spawn a certain amount. And then they would all have to like chain react, blow each other up to create like this huge explosion, which would be super dangerous, right? Because you're trapped in the room with them. Um, so I thought maybe this L-shaped room, if we didn't go with the go inside the paintings situation, if we just had the ba bombs maybe pop out somewhere, or one of the paintings is a painting of a ba bomb, and then you go to a room with a ba bomb dispenser, that might be kind of cool too. But then we're adding even more rooms, so I don't know how much work we really want to put into all this nonsense. Either way, um, we are dynamically lit. Uh, let's see. I guess we need to put down uh, some lighting outside. It'll be creepier 
if they show up during the day and everything looks safe. So let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, let's see. Oops. We'll put on the dynamic lighting layer so they don't see giant suns. That might be confusing. And because of the funky geometry, of course, uh, we got to put them freaking everywhere, or it won't light properly. There we go. That's always a pain, having a map that's outside and inside. You have to kind of account for that. All right. So we're dynamically lit. We got our GM labels on. We have really no guidelines whatsoever, except find something inside. So we could really just do whatever we want at this point. Um, so the one thing I was sure about is I want a giant ape Donkey Kong over here. So let me go grab a giant ape. Bring him out. That's a cutie. And then I already made a Donkey Kong token. That's how dedicated I was to this Donkey Kong idea. Um, let's see. Maybe. There he is. Alright, look at that handsome Donkey Kong. He's ready. He's ready to wreck it. Alright. It's a very small room for Donkey Kong to be uh, trapped. But he has his barrels, and he doesn't want anyone to touch his barrels. Um, the secret that they need is obviously in the barrel. And Donkey Kong will not let you touch his barrels. So, that's, that's enough right there secret token is in the barrel. I like the idea of these magic tokens. I like it a lot. Um, which means that we need a gumball machine. Or a vending machine. I have a vending machine. Uh, there we go. Perfect. Get over here, vending machine. Why do I have a vending machine, you might ask? Uh, because extra life. Um, Caves of Chaos, baby. The... The ultimate... Um, yeah, the the ultimate uh, funhouse dungeon. It's definitely Caves of Chaos. Or at least my Caves of Chaos. The original Caves of Chaos was just a place for murder hobos to go and absolutely murder baby goblins. Um, I really have no other way to describe it. Alright, let's see. Okay, vending machine. Perfect. Here, we'll put it there, and we'll say that the glow that's illuminating that side of the room is coming out of the vending machine. Uh, Alright, so they gotta get tokens, and they gotta feed the tokens to this vending machine, and only then can they vend the secrets of the universe that they need to know what to do next in this adventure. It doesn't always have to make sense. Um, Alright, sweet. So, let's see. I like that. Uh, so we got Donkey Kong. Uh, I got the bombs, so let me bring those in real quick. And we even have stats for the bombs, believe it or not, because I had a adventure on a train, and there were little bomb monsters. So there's a little bomb, adorable. Uh, yeah. So I thought that might be kind of cool. Um, if there is a bomb, we would need something for the bombs to pop out of, which could go right here. Uh, let's see. I'm thinking like, would it be would it be ridiculous to just put like a warp pipe? I feel like we can't overdo the Nintendo references, though. This would be like the only two Nintendo references that we could allow ourselves. Then we'd have to branch out into something else. Hmm. Oddly enough, there are no um, top-down shots of warp pipes. Uh, so I guess we'll have to make one real quick. As ridiculous as that sounds. Alright, so... Let's boot up the old Photoshop. I mean, unless unless some incredible person has already made a warp pipe, 
No. Okay. It's going to be even weirder is if they tried to go into the warp pipe, which had the bombs in it. Which, you know, would we allow that? I don't even know. Alright, so we'll make the ba bomb dispenser like that. We'll give it a transparent background. We'll create it. Alright. There we go. There's our color palette. And here we go. Uh, a circle. Easy enough. Boop. And let's see. We'll outline the outside of it with the black. There we go. Sweet. Uh, then we'll duplicate it. And we'll shrink it. Go right to the center of it. Ish. Okay. And I guess this has to be in the center for us to be in the center of it. Uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. Alright. And then we make the center of it ominously dark. So, there we go. And then I guess we could add some shading and call it a day. And then we have a warp pipe. Uh, let's see. Take us off to brush and... Uh, let's see. Shh. Oh wait, I should probably select it so I'm only spray painting that. There we go. Then we can make spray paint sounds. Shh. Lighter color. Yeah. And then for some reason the pipes I guess are plastic, so we gotta have this uh, blown out highlight. I guess we could have done the same thing with a gradient. Now that I think about it. Oh well. Uh, this is definitely more effort than I intended. Uh, let's see. Alright. Grab this. And we're going to delete this in the middle. There we go. Going to move this actually to the bottom. And then we're going to put a bevel on this guy. So it looks like it's popping up a little bit. Maybe? Oh, I know what's happening here. Our stroke is on the inside. We want it on the outside. There we go. Now we can bevel it. Uh, inner bevel. There we go. Bevel it up. There we go. Perfect. All right. Get rid of our color efforts, and there we go. Uh, we have a warp pipe for these guys to pop out of. That was just too much work. I don't know why I did that. Uh, so we'll pull this warp pipe. Gotta sell the illusion. Here we go. Oh, it's big. It's really big. It doesn't even need to be very big because um, the bob bombs aren't very big. I'm going to put it there, but more than likely, we'll have to put our friend the plinth underneath it. Uh, let's see. Which is actually stored under the keyword statue. As are all of our assets. So I'm going to let that uh, boot up. While that's booting up, I'm going to go grab my list of random... Funhouse uh, dungeon ideas. It's not my list, it's a list that I found. Uh, it is on hobbylark.com. Uh, a hundy and one. Don't crap out of me. I want all my assets. There we go. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, oh, oh. 
Oh, there we go. This will hide the couch nicely. There we go. Maybe too nicely. And then, yeah, our little dudes will just poop out. They'll just poop out of there. Boop, boop. There we go. Alright, so. Uh, 101 traps, puzzles, and challenges. Alright. I would, uh, I would move this over to the screen, but there's an ad for Second Life. I don't want you to be too scandalized by, by that. Or give up your real life for Second Life. It's a dangerous place. Be careful out there. Alright, let's see. Yeah, wow. Um, I don't know what my browsing history is trying to tell me here. Uh, so let's see. I'm not going to read 101 of these out loud. Uh, powerful wizard creates a cavernous sinkhole beneath a city. Meh. Uh, illusionary fire, ice, war, lightning. Meh. A room with a doorway 102 feet up. Walls are covered in tapestries. A random word has been engraved in the wall. Turns out it's the secret word for one of the tapestries, which is sort of a flying carpet. Uh, but it has to be removed from the magic, anti-magic clip holding it to the wall before it will respond. That's convoluted. Uh, let's see. A mimic has taken the form of a door. Incredibly original. A jelly blob creature partway through a door with a foot sticking out. It's just the tip of the iceberg, the little piece that had to go somewhere because the 1,000 by 1,000 foot room on the other side is already packed completely with this thing's enormous bulk. That's actually kind of a cool idea, but I don't know what to do about it. Um, a room with yellow lines that borders the walls and break for spaces at even intervals two three times. Where the lines break, there's a pressure sensitive trap that spins the entire section of the hallway to the left and ejects the character down into a pit of some kind or another. That sounds like something out of Tomb Annihilation. A room with ragged, bottomless looking hole in the center. Closer inspection reveals massive tooth marks at the edge of the hole. Oh, it's a mouth. It's a giant worm. I'm actually doing that on Thursday, so no thanks. Uh, circular room with a fountain in the center. Um, door with multiple knobs. Wrong knobs trigger traps. Long maze of gooey, spongy passages. Um, starts to shrink and harden if you take too long to get through. A horde of ghost pirates comes through the walls and attacks the players. Okay, okay. Kind of cool. Yes. Um, a statue of a big buff man holding his bicep to hand halfway between open and fist and grinning. You have to arm wrestle him to get through. Okay, that one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. Let's we'll add that to the maybes. Because they have... Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Arm wrestle statue. That's pretty fun. Not every encounter has to be do or die. Um, okay, room with an unusual light source. Um, some of the shadows are alive. Meh. Um, a man hanging at the far end, his wrists and ankles and shackles, chained to the wall above the door, closer room tightens the chains, screams out in pain. Uh, oh, it's a test of right and wrong. It's like an episode of Saw or whatever. Um, let's see. Anything from Indiana Jones? Well, baby, we've got that. We've got the minecart uh, race, so that's the thing. Um, circular raised platform, light comes down, only a penitent man will pass. Right after Indiana Jones, you're going to do that? Two chains retract into the wall 30 feet apart. Pull them together, feet of strength, to open the door. Eight levers and sockets that must all be turned at once. That's actually pretty good if they are separated. Because they're all going to be teleported differently, we assume. So that could be kind of cool. Um... Let's see, a long gravel corridor with a heavy statue. Come on, heads. Um, guy laughing in football gear, holding a rope at one end and a car at the other. Drag the man through the gravel to the car trunk. Connect them to pass. A wall of acoustic force that blasts the ears, takes force to get through. Uh, will make you temporary death. Eight holes in the wall, each with steel rod inside. One opens the door. The other seven shock the character. Hmm. Oh, you know what? 
you know, it'd be a cool room that isn't on the map. There was a uh, back uh, April Fools. Somebody released a basketball court. It'd be kind of cool to have a basketball court. Uh, let me see if I can find that. What's it called? Arena of the Globe Trotter. That's what it was called. All right. It'd be kind of neat. I have a basketball court. They got to play basketball. There we go. Let's bring a basketball court in there. You just play Space Jam the whole time. I guess you'd have to make up the mini game rules for how to play basketball. I don't know. But yeah, there it is. Uh, let's see, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, wide. And let's see. One, two. Eighteen tall. Okay. I mean, I'm down for a deadly game of basketball. Maybe. Alright, let's see. I did not mean to flip it. Uh, set dimensions. Alright. Twenty-seven by 18. Honk, hunker it down. There we go. There is room on this map for a basketball court. Amazing. And maybe they have to, they can only participate in this if they get five people. So you have to have like you have to have almost a whole team to enter this basketball challenge. Hmm. That sounds legit. Alright, we'll dynamically light this basketball court. Right. Oh, look. This one we could actually just snap to grid. That's nice. And done. Array snap to grid. All right, and then for lighting, we'll just put a moon in there so that it has dim lighting. Sweet. All right, ghostly basketball court added. How do we get to the ghostly basketball court? Should that be like number 11? Or should one of these areas just take you to the coast of basketball court? Or maybe you have to dream about basketball. And then on the wall, he's got like a picture of his favorite basketball player. And that's like the hint of what's going to happen if you fall asleep. And in, the, and in the chest are basketball uniforms that you have to put on. I'm really liking this. And the shelves are just full of basketball memorabilia. Again, this is a wild mage, so anything goes. That's full full meta right there. Yeah. That's pretty good. I was going to have something like with a night hag or something, like if you went to sleep. But I like the idea that he just dreams about Space Jam. I feel like that's even better. Alright. So we're going to need, uh, we're going to need some Space Jam stuff for this. Good thing I got to next week, because I'm probably going to do more prep on this than I should. Alright, this is our Space Jam uh, area. We need to uh, describe it uh, in a way that just says it's Space Jam without saying it's Space Jam. I dream of Space Jam. Perfect. Alright, so we've got a bomb factory. We've got Space Jams. We've got Donkey Kong. We got Magic Basketball. We've got Indiana Jones Minecart Chase. 
So far, so good. Um, other idea was this is a summoning circle, and it summons something really, really terrible. I also kind of like that there's this cauldron of potion uh, bubbling here, and despite their best efforts to avoid wild magic, it'd be pretty cool if a la Harry Potter, get ready for some Harry Potter spoilers, um, they had to drink all of the potion from the cauldron to access the token at the bottom of the cauldron. And then the horrible demon that's trapped in the circle will, of course, hint at that, but not actually, you know, help them. And so I'm thinking maybe a Pit Fiend is too much, but a Nalfeshni would be pretty cool. Those are like the big pig demons. I think they actually used to be called pig demons. I want to say that Ganon's based on one of these from Legend of Zelda. Uh, let's see. Nalfeshni. There we go. Man, there's just... There's just no margin anymore. I've got so many maps. Uh, so now Feshni are CR 13, so you certainly don't want to get stuck with them alone. And they don't cast any real spells. they got some spell-like abilities, which are kind of cool. Uh, but they're very evil, and they're very nasty, and they're very mean. Um, I don't know. I think it might be a fun one to have in there. Uh... One of the most grotesque demons, corpulent mockery of an ape and a boar, standing twice the height of a human. Feathered wings seem too small for their bloated body. Uh, they feed on hatred and despair, but they crave humanoid flesh above all others. And they keep their larder filled with humans abducted from the material plane. Yeah, they nasty. So, okay. That'd be kind of cool. Alright, so we've got Nelfishni. It's trapped in the circle. That's pretty cool. Got to drink all this potion to get to the the vending machine token that's inside. All right, at that point, I'm completely tapped out of any ideas. So if you've got any to post in the chat, cool. Otherwise, we're going to go back to reading this uh, this long grocery list of stuff that somebody came up with. Um, let's see. A room with gravity pulling four ways. Each wall is a five-foot deep pit of molten gold. Okay, that's kind of wild. Two electrified handles on opposite sides of a 30-foot chamber. Like the chains, except the characters need to form a conductive link to power the door to get it open. That's really cool. That's a good idea. All right. Uh, a room with a mud floor... He who swims to the bottom and finds the tunnel to the next room escapes. Also pretty cool. But, I mean, none of these rooms are like that. I guess I could just put a room full of mud. That'd be kind of cool. We don't have to use the rooms that are on the map. Hey, look. They had a basketball one. Uh, the players walk into a large room with a large stone ring sticking out of one wall. An equal number of ghostly figures. They're pretty strong. It should be a challenge for the players to beat them. You see the winners are hauled away to be sacrificed like Aztec basketball players. We're ahead of the curve here. A uh, table of two chairs and a statue of a smiling one-armed tick that comes alive and starts pouring drinks. Outdrink them. Mm -hmm. Okay. We could do like an eating contest in the dining room. That'd be kind of cool. What would you go into an eating contest against? What is the most eating monster? Maybe you could have a whole bunch of eating monsters that you have to defeat. That, that could be kind of cool. So, let's see. We use the text tool. And we'll put eating contest because that could be pretty fun. The other one that I was thinking is Sizu Piku released something uh, like a giant kitchen. Um, it looks a lot like this table, actually. I thought it'd be kind of neat if you got shrunk down uh, and then you had to explore the table to find it. But again, I only got four hours and I feel like getting shrunk down on table. Like, my friend ran an entire adventure where they were shrunk down. And I, I, I don't want to, like, detract from all the other crazy stuff there was to do here. 
Um, yeah. So, maybe an eating contest will be good enough. I don't know. The shrinking down thing is pretty cool, though. So, maybe. Alright. Uh, let's see what else is on this list. Uh, a circular man sized open door sweeping down into the floor. It's filled with something sticky and viscous like honey or molasses. Behind the door, um, it narrows a fist side opening, maximum arm reach next to the room. Nah. Um, more basketballs. A room full of bouncing basketballs that the player has trouble wading through. In the middle somewhere, balls start shooting in towards the character at random, hitting them in stun type locations like face and groin. Okay. I mean, an actual ball pit would be kind of dope. Um, I don't know where... I, again, that would be like an extra map we'd have to add. But a ball pit would be kind of cool. Especially if we filled the ball pit with, like, evil children. Or monster children. That'd be kind of cool. Like... They go through the portal and they have to swim to the surface and they're in like the fucking play place at McDonald's or something. I don't know. That'd be kind of cool. Also, very weird. But again, we're trying to go for like LSD level weirdness here. So, without the LSD. Uh, a room full of rotten barrels filled with decaying dynamite. No room to, to get around. Over is the only way. Well, that's awesome. But we do have a bomb factory, so we kind of have that covered. An Olympic swimming pool. There's a jelly blob uh, that fills up almost the entire pool. Okay, that's kind of cool, I guess. Um, well, we could just fill an entire room with a with a gelatinous cube. We could fill the pantry with gelatinous cubes. That'd be kind of cool. Like all the containers are empty because gelatinous cubes have eaten them all. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, oh, apparently... I have used hotkeys to change layers. It was not happy with me writing. Okay. Uh, gelatinous cubes. Alright. And let's see. Flimsy door, face to face with an arena style room packed with an audience of 10 to 20,000 hungry zombies. Okay, that's a little crazy. Players enter a room with a slowly strobing. Oh yeah, that's true. Hey, Elijah could be one of the contestants. Like a little crossover action. Where are you at, Elijah? Let's see. <laughs> Here he is. What a sweet boy. You thought this sweet boy was dead. But he's just, he's in an eating contest, that's all. Alright. Well, that's a win right there, for sure. For sure. Uh, who else is a good eater? Klaxonus is a good eater. We could put Klaxonus in here from Skull Shackles. There we go. Yes, all of the best eaters from all of D&D &D could be in here. I mean, Tarask is a good eater. I don't think Tarask is going to fit, though. We could put $1 Tarask in here. Mm, where are you at, $1 Tarask? There we go. Yeah. Well, that would be the kitchen. So we could definitely have somebody in the kitchen. <gasps> That's right. We could have Stai Fiari in the kitchen. And they have to beat him in a cook-off. They have to do an Iron Chef competition. Yes. Okay. Alright. Well, that's good. Let's go ahead and grab them. Oh, there he is. Oh, 
There it is. Man, those princess ice monsters, they're all so handsome. Alright. Troll Colonancer. Gotta beat him in his own game. Very nice. Should we give him his young lady assistant? I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but uh, she's a real firecracker. This one right here. His sous chef. Alright. That works. Okay. Mm. I mean, chamomile likes to eat. I don't know if uh, if that would be too uh, self-indulgently meta to, to throw her in there, but definitely like the idea of putting some hungry peeps in there. Uh, let's see. Why are these dramatically different sizes? That's weird. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a little weird to have this, like, kind of cozy spot by the fire, though. Not exactly sure what to do with that. We'll figure it out, though. Um... Let's see. So we've got a baby terrasse, Claxima's chamomile, and Jelija the, the gelatinous cube. Hmm. Okay. And then we've got a Iron Chef cook off in the kitchen. That's cool. Still not a hundred percent sure what to do with the uh, pantry because now I don't want to put I don't want to put uh, cubes in there if we've already got uh, a cube somewhere else in the dungeon. Uh, so we've got random potion effects until you drink all the potion. So that takes care of that noise. Uh, we got a crazy minecart ride. Uh, so that takes care of that. Uh, let's see. A room filled with water and fish. Contained within the room by magic and technology. Whatever it is, you can walk through it. And you're going to have to if you want to see what's on the other side. The water is dark and a little cloudy. But there's some harmless looking fish. Uh, but there's also a big shark. Uh, the players enter an empty room with a slowly strobing light. Uh, what they don't see is the monster ninja assassin stuck to the ceiling above them. Ninjas would be kind of cool and completely out of character for Hero Quest. Uh, Wizard of Oz flowers. Zodiac spreads across the floor. Single mirror at the end of the room. Looking into it reveals a face. After a moment, that jumps out of the mirror and screams. Uh, that's pretty crazy. 50-foot chasm full of razor-sharp blades. Uh, room with the mud floor. Room is sticky. Room full of about 30 gorillas that all look up at you when the door is open. The gorillas are gentle. They don't care what the players do, as long as they don't hurt any of them. The gorillas just run away. I do like the idea of a room full of gorillas, but we already have Donkey Kong, so I guess that's that. Pedestal with a cute rabbit sculpture does nothing, but if they look away from it, it roars and shakes the room. Well, we could put the Monty Python rabbit in here somewhere. That'd be kind of cool, but I'm actually saving that for some other campaign, uh, so maybe not. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Let's keep thinking. Let's, let's see. Pedestal, cute rabbit. A room with a hyper aging field. You turn one minute into a year. Inside the room, uh, there's a lush forest and flowers. Turn to fruit and drop an all space a minute. There's a door at the other side. I mean, that's kind of cool. Uh, a room with eight pools of water and eight. Fl oh, well, you know, we could make a room where they all turn into little kids. And then they have to... <gasps> what if in the pantry they all turn into little kids? And then as little kids, they have to get the cookies from the cookie jar on the top shelf. I don't know. Maybe? That'd be kind of weird. Uh, let's see. A room with eight pools of water and eight flush leapers. Pressure plates allow you to flush the floor. Uh, you might get flushed into a pit of... Zombies. Mm -hmm. A room with an oddly golden haze. In the center of the room is a squalling baby. Okay. 
and it's serendipitous. We just talked about babies. If the players scoop up the baby, it smiles, laughs, and then turns into a wad of angry mutant flesh with talons that tries to latch onto the faces and whatnot. At that moment, the rest of the room turns into something living like the inside of a stomach. Well, have I got news for you? I got a lot of maps that look like that now. So that could actually, we could actually do that. Damn. Where would we put a baby? Why would we put a baby? I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot to think about. Um. Hmm. Dreaming of basketball. Could do the baby in there instead. Do the basketball somewhere else. Hmm. I really like the baby flesh monster thing. I don't know. I'm going to save that for later. That's a good one. Alright. A room filled with an odd network of pipes. It's so difficult to move. Pipes are made of substances other than metal, like skin or wood. That's gross. Um, if threatened in any way, or if the room thinks it can take on whoever's in it, it will burst pipes, spraying them with steam, ground glass, acid, or any number of random shit. Dead characters and abandoned objects left in the room are absorbed to make new pipes. Oh my god, that's horrible. Copy. Paste. Uh, strobe lit hall of warped mirrors. Every time the light flashes, something grotesque appears. Add doppelgangers to add, amp up the fun if you wish. Uh, that's another good idea. Um, a door with large unusual keyhole. The room is filled with keys and a handful of random objects. All the keys but the proper one are coated in poison. And the proper one turns out to be something really random like a wine bottle or a dildo. Well, they don't know my hero quest players, because that's the first thing that they would try it and use, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll post the link. It's just an article on a website. I'm just kind of shopping through it, trying to find some funhouse dungeon ideas. All right, a door that's totally barricaded over. If you tear down the barricades, uh, you find whatever it was barricaded against, okay. Set up a junction. No one knows it's a trap challenge or locked. A breakable door but no key. Ominous um, and a statue armed warriors who are staring at you. Mm. Simple looking room with a locked door and a key on a pedestal. That sounds easy. Uh, when the characters pick up the key and try to insert it in the lock, it crumbles to dust. The key is still in the room, but it's hidden somewhere. Under the pedestal. Lulls. Uh, or under a brick in the floor. Uh, the options are endless. Wow, that's really... That's that's horrible. I'm gonna copy and paste that one. Mm. All right. Um, trap situation using something from a different time dimension. Uh, Claymore mines. Oh wow. Uh, steam powered monstrosity. Mm. Uh, a device or room housing device that subsonically triggers the pleasure centers in the brain. Okay. Uh, let's see. People aren't able to move because they're having an endless, massive orgasm. Man, Hobby Lark, just delivering them goods. I wonder if we got some Second Life ads here. Uh, sure, they'll die of starvation eventually. Oh, I do kind of like that, though. I mean, obviously I like that. But the idea that the room is so great that they just never want to leave? I mean, that's kind of cool. That means the others have to find the person, but then it also makes for a very boring night for the person that gets trapped there. A uh, really creepy room with really creepy things. Mm -hmm. uh, while in town, buying supplies, looking for work, wizard in town and willingly opens a singularity bubble, making the town a focal point of a black hole. Blah, blah, blah. No thanks. Players find themselves face to face with a giant steel double door covered in a series of dark symmetrical aligned holes, uh, a room full of corpses in various states of decay, these are getting worse as we go, uh, the characters have to get into a building dungeon installation, uh, encourage them to get creative in their attempts to get in without being turned to a hamburger, why would they get turned, oh, it's automated meat processing unit, I thought like somebody was actually going to turn them into a hamburger, um, okay, let's see, this sounds like a Doctor Who episode, actually, where you have to become, like, uh, a robot to get past the robots. 
long windy passage, grates in the floor, uh, room with dirt stone walls, uh, looks like... What if there was a room that was just everything was cake? That's like a meme right now. Everything is cake. What if this, what if this study, everything in here was cake? Except for the key. Or the token that they're looking for. That seems legit. Alright. Everything is cake. <gasps> Even you. Oh shit. That's, yeah. There we go. There are people that are actually concerned that they might be cake after all these, you know, videos where it's a cake. It's like a real fear now, being afraid of actually being cake. Um, create a big central door with three to six keyholes. Every key must be inserted to get it open. Now hide each of the keys in different parts. We're kind of doing that with our vending machine, but thanks for the idea. Players find an important door they have to get through, but a massive pillar has fallen on the way. Oh, well. gasp, a pillar. Um, a room with another smaller room inside. Blood and gore have seeped out through the door of the smaller room. If the players go and find inside, they find a sickeningly, sickeningly macabre scene of dismembered corpses. Then the door locks and the walls sprout knives and start to move. Yikes. Okay. Um, the players find a music box and some random part of the dungeon. It plays a simple tune. Later, they come across an impassable door. Hmm. This is just too complicated. Um, impassable door with a room with a large monolith. On the face of the monolith are growing runes that are each a different color and shine their light across the face of the door. What opens the door is up to you. Maybe the characters have to cover up a keyword. Blah, blah, blah. A living door with a face greets the characters as they come to the room. He doesn't want to let them through. If they persist, he says he requires a living sacrifice. If they try to get through anyways, he chooses one of them at random and traps them in a constricting magical jar. He could pers be persuaded to let the target go, but only at a steeper price. Yeah, we could do that. We could throw, like, a fable door up in here. But I think we're done. We just have the um, pantry left to do. If everything is cake, is actually what we're going with. Um, yeah. I'm not really seeing... I've got to figure out what the hell to do with this damn pantry. Big spoiler, in the Rick and Morty adventure, in the pantry are a bunch of pickles. And if you disturb the pickles, they burst out of their jars and try to kill you. Because Pickle Rick, I guess. Um, hmm. it's it's actually a pretty fun adventure. Uh, normal looking room, decent furniture, water fountain, bowl of fruits. When they go in, the door locks behind them because it's passable. How do you get out? Clock on the wall is open. Uh, they can reverse it. Mm, players enter a gallery of odd looking paintings on both doors. Uh, both doors close and lock. If you pause to look at the paintings, you feel drawn into them. You get sucked into the painting and have to fight the people in there. Yeah, I was going to do that with the bomb room. But I feel like, I don't know. It probably would have been a cooler thing to do. Um, the key, or token in this case, is in one of the painting worlds. Uh, the players walk into a room just in time to see a man with a jackal's head, Anubis, confront a man who looks like another adventurer. Uh, only those whose heart is pure. The adventurer does so. Do his research, removes his heart, weighs it, uh, chucks the heart to a nearby crocodile. The adventurer dies on the spot. Oh, jeez. I mean, that'd be cool. That'd be super cool to have Anubis like weigh their heart. But I don't think anybody's gonna have the courage to do that. Um, the characters walk into a room. The door at the end. This is the kind of instant death bullshit. I had to deal with as a child playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, like, Anubis just rips out your heart and die. Like, there was no saving throws. The DM was just like, yeah, you did. That was the end. That was it. You couldn't go onto social media and, like, complain about it. You just you just had to make a new character or find a new group. That was that. Was that. Ugh. Um, the character enters a room with a locked door and a dome of glass. They can see the sky. 
Um, the real trick is if they break the glass in the dome, the sky loses and shatters too. An underground lake, previously held back from the dome, pours into the room through the hole. That's cool. Man, there's some pretty good stuff in this list. Um, the characters enter another gallery of paintings. The door is locked and impassable, but it's interesting. It seems to be a strange mesh quality. How do they get out? There's a letter written on the back of each of the paintings. When they're combined, de-jumbled, password is spoken. Make it something really cheesy, or even go for full words on the back and require them to make a full sentence. Um, a pit trap opens. Uh, oh, I know what we could do for the pantry. I know what we could do. We don't have any mimics in this adventure. We could make all of the food mimics. Uh, where did I see a mimic swarm? Just the other day. Uh, let's see. They were baby mimics? I think it was on Reddit. Hold on. And that'll be pretty cool. The pantry is uh, a mimic nest. I love it. Attacked by food. It'll be perfect. Alright. Where? Where did I see it? It's like everything I see, I, I could like vaguely remember it happening. Like it was a dream. But then, uh, yeah, I, I don't actually remember where I saw it. Swarm of baby mimics. Wow, thanks for that victory fanfare, Chrono Trigger soundtrack. I'm also very proud of myself for remembering where it is. Uh, swarm of baby mimics. Um, perfect. We could make the whole room baby mimics. Uh, it'll be amazing. Let the party collect some gold coins. Suddenly the gold coins start adhering to the players. Then the swarm mobilizes. Um, yeah, it's pretty cute. Okay. Uh, let's see. Is your PDF accessible enough that we can copy pasta? Or we're going to have to totally uh, rewrite this thing? Oh, I guess we'll download it and find out. Yeah, a swarm of baby mimics. That could be pretty fun. So, I guess I would just need some tokens that look like a bunch of food. Hmm. Alright. What are the stats on these bad boys? Alright, Swarm of Baby Mimics. Not a very big challenge rating. That's okay. Um, Alright, they adhere to anything. They are grapplers, which is adorable. Um, and they just do piercing and acid damage. I mean, honestly, we could probably just take an existing swarm and do that. Alright, I'm down. Okay, so instead of gelatinous cubes, we will just say it's heck amounts of mimics. The whole pantry is mimics. I like it. Alright. Mimic nest. There you go. Alright. Um, important question is, what are they trying to get out of this vending machine? Could be a good question like why do they need the coins and what are the coins going to get them uh, if there's treasure all throughout the funhouse are we just going to go with like goofy treasures that are silly or are we actually going to go with useful treasures like we need to have the ring of return obviously to honor the original hero quest Like all Hero Quest players, they have learned that um, searching for treasure is very dangerous. All right. Hmm. I mean, that is what it was called, right? It's the Marine Return. I'm not going crazy. Why am I not seeing stats for it? Hmm. Let me check my Google Drive. Drive, which can read your pictures, find the find the words. Oh, there we go. 
All right, Ring of Return. When invoked, this magical ring will return all heroes uh, to the starting point of the quest. It can only be used once. Well, that seems kind of shitty. All right, gonna copy this. I feel like <clears throat> word of recall basically to the beginning of the dungeon. And it's, I mean, it's pretty cool. It's certainly pretty cool. Um, but only one charge, that kind of sucks. But then again, being able to do it more than once also kind of sucks. I guess if it doesn't require attunement, it's not that big a deal. Um, yeah. Okay. So, to remind myself, word of recall... I think it's like a 5th level spell or something. 6th level spell. Holy crap. Uh, you and up to 5 willing creatures, that would be all the hero quest characters, uh, within 5 feet of you instantly teleport to a previously designated sanctuary. You and any creatures that teleport with you appear in the nearest unoccupied space to the spot you designated when you prepared your sanctuary. Uh, if you cast a spell without first preparing a sanctuary, the spell has no effect. You must designate a sanctuary by casting the spell within a location such as a temple dedicated to or strongly linked to your deity. If you attempt to cast the spell in this manner, an area that isn't dedicated to your deity, the spell has no effect. Okay, so basically it's going to work similar to a word of recall, but take you back to the beginning of the dungeon. Alright. So we'll just do, we'll just copy this information here. And we'll make the ring of return handout real quick. Before we forget. There we go. Uh, let's spot uh, nearest to the entrance of the current dungeon. After being used. The ring vanishes. Okay. So very, very cracker, cracker jack prize there. Um, could have a lot of cracker jack prizes like that in the vending machine, which would be kind of cool. Um, could even grab my vending machine notes from um, the vending machine extra life, actually. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Our Draken's Refreshing Simulacrum. That is what this vending machine is called. Uh, let's see. So for two silver, you can get some Cheetos. Um, not bad. Counts as a good berry spell. Uh, you can get Doritos. Also counts as a good berry spell. Snickers bar, give you lesser restoration. Six pack of Oreos. Uh, when combined with an ice cold milk, functions as a heal spell. Else it's just cookies. Uh, Coke Classic. Uh, basically a chilling potion. Sprite, refreshing, removes all exhaustion you might have. Jolt soda, haste on self for three rounds, then tired. Purple monster drink, you turn into grimace. Again, I don't know. I don't know. Um, chicken salad sandwich, counts as a hero's feast, only person who ate it, the whole thing. Um, let's see, randomly generated trash item. Okay, cool. Uh, makes a perfect clone of the character and grants one wish. Wow. I always forget every year how crazy the extra life marathon gets. Oh, also, if you attack this vending machine, um, it will defend itself as the stats of an ancient blue dragon. Uh, which was, which they did attack it. So that was kind of crazy. Alright. Um, hmm. Hmm. All right. So we've got a room full of mimics. Let's 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 walk it through. Uh, they show up. They're told they've got to find the secrets at this place. Uh, two gargoyles here. Uh, basically, fill them in on the history of the place, how dangerous it is, and that this vending machine will only uh, will only give up its wares with special tokens, and you need tokens, uh, you know, to get the secrets from the vending machine or whatever. So, they have to go into the dungeon, 
they have to retrieve the tokens. Each room has an opportunity to get a token, essentially. Alright, so room number two is I Dream of Space Jam. So, you look around the room, you see that it's full of Space Jam memorabilia, you get in the bed, and you fall asleep, and you go over to the magical basketball court where you're forced to play basketball. Uh, do or die basketball. Alright. Um, so that's a thing. Then we got three Babom Factory. You've got to get um, a certain number of Babams to all blow up at the same time, which is a dangerous endeavor to be sure. Um, and for that, we actually already have bomb tokens, or miniatures. What am I trying to say? Monsters. There we go. We already have a stat block for Babams. Here we are. Adorable. Uh, bomb automatons, uh, they explode, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that's going to be a whole whole mess trying to get that to work. And let's see. Location 4, Donkey Kong doesn't want you to touch his barrels. A sign on the wall says there's barrels. Um, I guess we could actually have like the ghost of the, the wizard show up and basically like tell you in each room where stuff is. Let's see. Do we have any ghosts that would be appropriate? This one looks kinda cool. I don't know. He definitely looks happy. Like Yeah. Okay. I guess we'll go with this guy for now. Alright. Um, and obviously this guy does not want you to take his barrels or mess with his barrels, so he's just gonna beat the shit out of you if you touch his barrels. Works for me. Um, is there a way to get to his barrels without him doing this? I mean, that's what Dungeons & Dragons is all about, right? So, organically, I guess they could come up with some reason, um, that, uh, he would be willing to do this. Uh, I don't even want to try to think about it, I'm just gonna let it happen organically. Alright, location 5 is a mimic nest. It looks like a well-stocked pantry. Literally everything in there is a mimic. The shelves, uh, the boxes, the food, the loaves of bread. Everything in there is a mimic. Just swarms of mimics are going to attack people. Uh, I'll probably need to make a swarm of mimics um, miniature, I guess. But uh, I like the idea that the whole room is just, just mimics. Uh, here, eating contest. Uh, you've got to compete, uh, eat the most food against these brave competitors right here. If I can think of anybody else that likes to eat, I'll definitely bring them in. But if we had multiple people going to this room, uh, we could have like three competitors try to out-eat these people. So that's an idea. Uh, seven, you enter this mine uh, cart adventure. So let's grab an actual mine cart. Before we forget, uh, let's see. I actually don't have a very good minecart, which makes me a little sad. Hmm. Oh well. Uh, we'll use this one. Everything's going to the GM layer. Alright, here we go. So the minecart will make it a uh, drawing. There we go. Alright, cool. So that takes us down here. Uh, let's see. Minecart would roll in here, I'm thinking. And then it would go along the tracks. We would have bad guys. I'm thinking just classic hero quest bad guys, like orcs and zombies and mummies and stuff. Like, weak stuff, you know? That is uh, pursuing you in their own minecarts. Alright. Uh, let's see. Maybe we should trace on the GM layer uh, the route that they're supposed to take so that we have a better idea of what's going on here. Alright, so they come in, and I guess it doesn't matter which way they go. Um, but if they go down, they won't have to deal with the waterfall. Alright, uh, let's see, so they would get to about here, and then they gotta figure out which track they wanna go on. 
Um, this could be very bad because there is um, blockage in the road, so they're going to want to go this way. There we go. All right, and that's actually going to go underneath those tracks. Uh, but it's dangerous because this would actually affect this track. So you're going to have like boiling hot tar and oil thrown down on you. So you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't on this one. Um, let's see. Uh, but you're super damned. Uh, no, you're, you're pretty screwed either way. Uh, so it keeps going. And then we got flamethrowers you got to deal with. So that's a whole thing. And then there's a way that they could change the tracks right here, but they're still going in one direction. Uh, turn the corner, debris on the road again. And then finally, uh, the exit. And because things are weird, when you exit, you'll just exit right back into this room, but you'll have a shiny token for your troubles. Sounds good to me. Um... All right. Since they're level seven, everything's just gonna have a DC 17-ish. Sounds pretty good. So the flamethrowers will deal damage to them. The waterfall will soak them, I guess, and fill their cart, which will slow it down and allow other monster carts to catch up with them. Uh, here we go. Put a couple more mine carts over here. There we go. I like the idea of maybe putting in the cart like that, like a like a big dragon or something. Do I have? Let's see. Hmm. Oh yeah, we could just put Drybones Bowser. I know I said we'd only allow ourselves two Nintendo things, but I mean, Dry Bones, Bowser, come on, that'd be super cool. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so that looks pretty fun. Um, so that's going to happen while we're doing other stuff too, because again, everybody's going to be all split up, so this is going to be a real brain buster trying to run all these different encounters. This creature wants to be freed... Um, in order to lie, cheat, and steal to do so, but if it is freed or attacked, um, it will, I'm pretty sure, wreck whoever freed it, um, which will be pretty bad for them. Um, and then they gotta do the whole, um, Harry Potter potion thing. So, let's see, go to text tool. Alright, Harry Potter potion trap. Demon in circle. All right, kind of sums it up pretty well. Okay, uh, Iron Chef cooking contest, and then everything is cake. Whew. All right, I think it's good stuff. Um, so what does that leave for me to do? Uh, obviously I have to go get the Monstars, um, and the Castle Space Jam, and make miniatures for all of them, and find great Space Jam music to play in the background while they play basketball. Um, you would say, but don't you need actual rules for playing basketball? And that is true too, so I probably need to make up some D&D rules for playing basketball. Um, or not, I don't know. Um... But yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this, uh, this turned out. Uh, this was a very helpful article. Had some pretty good stuff here. Uh, some of which I have saved for later. I'm going to save the link for later, too. Uh, definitely, if I was not restricted by wanting to use this particular map, I could go really bananas with this thing. I could have just ditched that map and then just had, you know, ten random rooms, which would have been pretty cool also. Um, but sometimes working within restrictions is, uh, not a bad thing. So. Oh, look, the last one is the water temple from, uh, uh, Ocarina of Time or whatever. There are no visible doors, room starts to flood. How do you get out? 
hole in the ceiling. Ugh, that killed me. That killed me trying to figure out that water temple. Alright, um, I think we're good. Worst case scenario, I just wing everything else for this, but I am prepared now to run uh, Castle of Mystery Hero Quest Quest 10. Uh, I think it's going to be really ridiculous. Um, so, uh, if you are interested in watching it live, we're going to play it next Wednesday uh, from 8 to midnight Eastern Time. Otherwise, it'll eventually make its way to the YouTubes. So, um, but for now, I am going to go uh, enjoy no D&D &D tonight and some dinner. So, thanks for hanging out, everybody, and I'll see you next time.